So in this question, we're given that g of x is 2x plus 5 over x minus 3. And we're given the domain for this function, which is that x is greater than or equal to 5. And we need to find out what g of g of 5 is. Now an easier way to write g of g of 5 is, if I write in this notation here, g square brackets g of 5. And now what we can see is that what we're really doing is that we're finding out what g of 5 is by plugging 5 into this function, using that answer and plugging it back into g, and that will give us g of g of 5. So let's start by finding what g of 5 is. So g of 5 is simply going to be the function g that we have here, but we'll have 5 in replacement for the x. So we'll have 2 times 5 plus 5 over 5 minus 3. And I put the brackets around the 5s and clearly see the substitution that I made for the x's into the 5. Now simplifying this, we'll have 10 plus 5 over 2, which is 15 over 2. Now remember, we're finding g of g of 5. But if g of 5 is 15 over 2, then now what we're fi really finding is g of 15 over 2, which is the same as g of g of 5. Now, putting this back into the function, we'll have 2 times 15 over 2 plus 5 over 15 over 2 minus 3. Simplifying this, we'll have 15 plus 5 at the top, all over 15 2 minus 3, which is 9 over 2. Simplifying this, we'll have 20 over 9 over 2, which is 40 over 9, as I have times top and bottom here by 2. And that is our final answer for this question. Now, the breakdown for marks here is you would get one mark for finding what g of 5 is, which we've done here, and you'll get one mark for the final answer, and that will give you the two marks in the question. Now, for the second part here, we need to find out what we need to state the range of g. So, the first thing we shall do is look at the domain of the function they've given us, which is that x is equal to or greater than 5. Well, let's see, we know what g of 5 is from the previous question. It was 15 over 2. So now we need to find out whether this is going to be the maximum of g of, of, g of x or the minimum of g of x. Now, the way to investigate this is, let's see what happens to x as it gets very, very large. So if we take the limit as x approaches infinity of g of x, which is the same as the limit as x approaches infinity of 2x plus 5 over x minus 3. Now, x is, when x is very, very large, then these bits here, the plus 5 and the minus 3, become so negligible to the actual value, to the point where we could ignore them. So now we'll find a limit as x approaches infinity over 2x over x. And here we can see we can simplify this fraction by crossing out the x's, and we can see that our final limit here is just going to be 2. So now we have two cases where when x is the lowest possible value it can be, i.e. 5, g of 5, we have it's 15 over 2. And when x approaches infinity, the function approaches 2. So these must be our two bounds for g of x. So it that g of x must lie in between 2 and 15 over 2. And now we need to check something. Can g of x ever be 15 over 2? Well, yes, it can, because x can be 5, therefore g of x can be 15 over 2, which means this must be a less than or equal to symbol. Now, can g of x ever be 2? Well, this is where our limits come in. As x can never actually be infinity, x can only approach infinity, which means this function approaches 2, but never actually gets to 2. Therefore, that must mean that g of x must be greater than 2, but never equal to 2. So this is a final answer, which will get you the one mark. For part C of this question, we need to find the inverse of g of x and also state its domain. Let's start by the first part, which is finding the inverse of g of x. Essentially, we have the g of x is 2x plus 5 over x minus 3, and we're trying to find the inverse of this. And the best way to go about this is replace our g of x with a y and keep the function the same. Then what we want to do is make x the subject of this equation. When we find x as the subject of this equation, we'll have the inverse of g of x. Because that's essentially what we're doing. You're flipping the x's and the y's. So now, let's times both sides by x minus 3 to simplify this. So you have y times x minus 3 equals 2x plus 5. 
And then let's expand the bracket on the left hand side. So we have xy minus 3y equals 2x plus 5. Now because we're trying to make x a subject of this formula, we want all the x's to be on one side and the y's and the constants to be on the other. So let's add 3y to both sides and take away 2x from both sides. So we have xy minus 2x equals 3y plus 5. And now I'm going to factorize the x on the left hand side to get it by itself. So taking x out of both these, we have y minus 2 times x equals 3y plus 5. And now I can simply divide both sides by y minus 2. So we'll have 3y plus 5 all over y minus 2. Now substituting the correct formula uh, symbols back in, x now becomes the inverse, which is g to the minus 1 of x. On this right hand side, we'll have 3x plus 5 over x minus 2. And that gives you the inverse function right there. But now the next part is that we need to find the domain of this function. Well, the domain of the inverse is simply the range of the original function, which means that from part b, where we calculated the range of the first function, this is actually also the domain of the inverse. And all we have to do is replace the g of x with an x. And this will be the domain of the function g to the minus 1 of x. Now the breakdown of marks, we'll get one mark for setting the correct domain, one mark for finding inverse, and one mark to getting the stage here.